absolutely gorgeous day out today. Obviously, out here on trail, not in the basement today. But I uh, wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some backpacking gear while I'm out here on trail. And I talk a lot about the gear that I carry and, you know, gear that I'm interested in. And I've previously done a video on ultralight backpacking gear that I have no interest in doing. And I thought, while I'm out here on trail, why not shoot a part two to that video? So, as we're hiking along, first piece of gear I'm going to talk about is a pretty popular piece of gear amongst ultralight backpackers and through hikers. And that's a fanny pack. Now, myself, I hike with an Osprey Exos 58 backpack. My pack does not have hip belt pockets. So with just my pack alone, I don't have the ability to carry stuff on my front. And I know with other people, they like having a fanny pack, especially when they're using these frameless packs and packs without hip belts. But for myself, I do like having gear in the front, but I don't necessarily like the idea of a fanny pack. I find for what I would use a fanny pack for, they're just not actually big enough. So what I go with to supplement myself with some storage on the front is actually this guy here, which is my ribs front pack. The big reason why I like my ribs front pack is the amount of storage on this thing. I've got, I think an additional 14 liters with the medium size. So I've got seven liters on either side, tons of little storage options. It's got little mesh dividers inside to store my gear. But when I'm out on trail, on the right side here, in the little pocket on the front, I've actually got a little baggie of stickers and cards and stuff. Um, I do tend to get recognized quite a bit backpacking up here in the Rockies and the areas I go. And I love giving stickers out to people when I bump into them. And then in the main compartment on the right side here, I carry my camera gear. So I carry my cell phone and my little tripod and I've got a little holder to clip my cell phone in there. And I just, I like that I can kind of keep that on its own. I'm not reaching in and risking pulling out other gear when I go in to grab my camera to start doing some filming like I'm doing right now. And then on the left side, in the small pocket on the left side here, I carry my car keys. That's just kind of the spot that my keys go. That's the only thing that ever goes in that pocket. In the big pocket here, if I move my bear spray out of the way, keep my trail snacks for the day. Um, I've usually got a pack of cigars with me, pull my wallet in there, as well as I keep my little electronics bag in there. So that is why I don't necessarily carry a fanny pack with me. And I know they are super popular, like I said, amongst ultralight backpackers, but I'm just not a big fan. But as we keep hiking along and get to the spot we're gonna camp tonight, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some more ultralight gear that I'm not really interested in. here along the Clyde River never disappoints. All right, I am at camp here and I got my camp set up and I wanted to get my camp set up before we talked about the next piece of ultralight backpacking gear that I have zero interest in getting. And what we're gonna talk about is a shelter system and specifically a Dyneema tent. Now I know Dyneema tents are all the rage among almost every backpacking YouTuber, everybody seems to have one. And honestly, it's one of those pieces of gear that I don't think I will ever get. I am an avid hammock camper. I love sleeping in my hammock. If I have the option to sleep in my hammock over a tent, I will take my hammock every single time. The quality of sleep to me that I get in a hammock far outweighs any benefits of taking a tent. I know many of you guys and gals out there will say that a tent setup is just always gonna be lighter and you're 100% true a tent setup will always be lighter than a hammock setup, but for me, the weight of carrying a hammock setup is gonna far outweigh uh, any, any night I'm ever gonna have sleeping on the ground or uh, sleeping like a peasant, as I like to call it. I do have grand visions and dreams of someday replacing my tarp with a Dyneema tarp at some point, but uh, yeah, a Dyneema tent is, is definitely not something I have any interest in ever getting.
sitting here at the uh, gorgeous camp location here at Waterfalls Creek. The third piece of ultralight gear we're going to talk about today that I have no interest in getting, a Helinox chair. Uh, I just honestly don't find them comfortable whatsoever. I've tried Justin's chair out. I've tried a couple different ones at different retail stores and I, I honestly don't get it guys. Uh, I, I think they're ridiculously uncomfortable. A Helinox chair is something that's never going to find its place into my backpack. It will never ever replace the trusty Thermara Z seat. I just carry this little flat foldable foam pad here. This is my ass pad. This is what I use as a chair. You know, I will plop it down on a bench, park my butt on it. I'm totally fine laying down on the ground and laying in the dirt and I'll use it as my pillow. It doubles as my foot insulation in my hammock. I only use a partial under quilt. So the uh, under quilt or my under insulation in my hammock only comes to about the back of my calves. So I put the Thermara Z seat in the top quilt and put my heels on it and that's what keeps the bottom of my feet and the back of my legs warm when I'm sleeping in my hammock. The Helodox chairs, it's just one of those things that just does not work out for me. I time to bust out the camera. As I'm getting packed up here, I thought I would talk about another piece of popular ultralight gear that I really don't have any interest in getting, and that is the super popular Outdoor Research Helium Rain Jackets. They are really nice. I know a couple of people who have them, and you know, I've, I've checked them out, and I've drooled over them a bit, but for, for what it does, you cannot beat the Frog Togs Rain Jacket. Uh, this thing is like an eighth the price of the helium jackets. Those things are like 200 plus dollars. The frog togs are like 25 to 30 dollars. If I have to replace this every single season, I mean, I can get eight years out of going frog togs jackets, and I really don't think you're getting eight years out of the helium jacket. It essentially does the same thing. It just stops you from getting wet. It works just as well as a little insulating layer to throw on in the morning and seal a little more body heat. So yeah, for me, I'm, I'm a bit of a cheap ass. You guys know I love my budget gear and I, I'm not picking up a $200 rain jacket ever. I will continue to go with the $25 Frog Togs jackets. As I'm hiking out here, I uh, remember that I had previously mentioned shooting another video on ultralight backpacking gear that I was not interested in whatsoever. If you guys have not seen that one, I'll pop it over right here for you guys. So when you're done watching this one, you can head on over, check that video out. I'll see you guys over there. As always, I'm Maddie. Thank you so dang much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.